What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are taking a look at everything we know about the 1.19 update because at this point we are really not far off from getting all the features in the snapshots and only a couple months away to getting the actual release of the update. Now of course we don't actually have a firm date for when the update is releasing but we can go ahead and guess that it's going to come out sometime this summer likely in either June or July. So we have seen a bunch of the changes that they showed off at Minecraft Live last year. There are a lot of changes coming to Minecraft for the 1.19 update. So let's go ahead and start going over all the changes that are going to be coming in this update and everything that we've seen so far. The first, obviously, we have been kind of touring around this ancient city and the deep dark biome for a little while now, and this is probably the biggest change coming to the game in the 1.19 update. These massive ancient cities are going to be able to be found in the deep dark biomes of your Minecraft world. Now this is going to be uh, somewhat hard to find because they are going to be fairly rare, but they do have some pretty unique features. There are some structures in here, also the main uh, base of the portal has uh, that redstone room which is super interesting and adds a little bit of redstone uh, lore to the game which I absolutely love. And then there's obviously the huge centerpiece of this entire thing which uh, is made of reinforced deep slate. Now you're not actually able to acquire reinforced deep slate in survival which means that it's a very unique block. It's going to be completely blast resistant, you're not going to be able to move it and this is what's making most people think that the main part of the ancient city is actually a portal. Now obviously it wouldn't be a portal in the 1.19 update. If they do decide to make it a portal it's going to come in a later update but we really have no idea for now. But what we do know about the ancient cities is that they are full of chests in all the different structures so you're going to be able to find a lot of loot in the ancient cities uh, and it's actually pretty good loot so you're going to find enchanted diamond gear similar to what you'd find in in cities and you're also going to find uh, a very unique item which is the echo shard which you can use to make the recovery compass which will lead you right back to where you died. Also in these chests is the Swift Sneak enchantment which is a brand new enchantment for your leggings which makes you go the normal speed of walking while you're sneaking which is very useful. There's actually three different tiers of it and it'll uh, increase speed each time but the main effect will be you will walk as fast while you are sneaking. But obviously all of this loot can't come without any danger and that is where the Warden comes in. But before we talk about the Warden, let's talk about all these Skulk blocks that are currently around us. The first one is the Skulk Sensor. This is what's actually going to alert the Shriekers or the Warden where you actually are. Uh, they added 3D directional sound into the game so that it actually mimics exactly where you are relative to everything else. The Skulk Shriekers are what calls the Warden and it seems to take about three shrieks from the Shriekers to actually summon the Warden into the game and the Warden will come straight out of the ground. Now a few things about the Warden, the Warden is blind but it can smell you and it can hear you. It'll smell you from up to 20 blocks away currently, this is something that's been changing a couple times throughout the snapshots so it's really liable to change in future snapshots and even the final update. Uh, but 20 blocks away is the current number and it'll also hear you anytime you make a noise. Now the Warden has an insane amount of health so it's really not something you're going to want to take on and it doesn't even have a uh, unique drop so you're not going to go in fighting the Warden hoping to get some special treasure from it. All the treasure that you're going to find in the deep dark is going to be in the loot chests that are around these ancient cities. Mojang really wanted to add a new unique challenge to the game and instead of fighting another boss they have made something that you really want to avoid rather than actually fight. The Warden has an insane amount of health as I said and it also does an insane amount of attack damage. It'll two shot you while wearing netherite armor so it's really something you're going to want to just avoid. In the latest snapshot they have also given the warden a brand new ranged attack so if it can't get to you with its melee attack it's going to send a sonic pulse at you which will also two shot you. Basically this thing is absolutely terrifying and you want to avoid it at all costs. 
In order to not make noise while in these deep dark biomes and to avoid the warden, you're going to want to sneak around, walk on wool, and when you're opening chests, place wool around the chest so that it won't actually alert the uh, skulk sensors that you're opening the chest, otherwise you're going to summon the warden right as you're opening up one of the loot chests. For the most part, that pretty much covers all that we know about the Deep Dark and the Warden so far. Obviously, there are still things changing, we just got new features for the Warden in the last snapshot, so a lot of things are probably going to change after this video, but for now, that is exactly what we know, and it's probably not going to change too much. It's either going to be a few less blocks for hearing, maybe a reduced amount of damage on the ranged attack, things like that, but these are the features that we have so far. Now let's get out of the caves and start talking about what's changing up on top of the ground in Minecraft. The biggest thing up here is a brand new biome and this is the mangrove swamp biome. This is a really cool biome, adds in a few new blocks such as the mud that covers the ground. Mud is super interesting because it is obviously a brand new block, it introduces some new building blocks to the game, and it also introduces re renewability for clay. So now you're basically going to be able to take clay or dirt rather, turn it into mud and then drain it out through dripstone to make clay, making clay much easier to get in this new update. Another brand new thing coming to the game is chest boats. Chest boats are going to be super useful when you're out exploring oceans or rivers, things like that. You're going to be able to sit in a boat with a chest and have basically double the storage space you would normally have while in a boat. Now excuse the horrible driving that I do through this mangrove swamp as we just go through this area here, but this is a really cool looking mangrove swamp biome. We have all the tree roots coming down into the water and also you can see that there's moss carpet and everything surrounding this whole area giving it a bit of new life. Mangrove trees you're going to be able to grow through propagules instead of saplings which is a unique feature and it is the first tree in the game to actually have roots. These roots come in two different forms, you're either going to find the normal roots or you're going to find mud packed roots, both of which are super cool. I think it's a great idea to have the roots packed with mud as well, it makes a very interesting new block. Also in these uh, biomes you're going to find a brand new mob which is the frog and you're actually going to find frogs in a few different biomes of the world as there are three different variants of these frogs. Now I'm only going to show off one in today's video, the others are just different colors of the same frog and will produce different frog lights when it eats a magma cube. I'll show more of that off in a second though, let's talk about the mangrove tree first. So the mangrove tree as I said is the first tree with roots in the game, but it also adds a brand new wood type to the game as well. Mangrove wood is a really cool looking red color, also these roots you can pick up just by hitting which makes them super useful. I do think if you put them in a crafting table you should be able to get something like sticks from them. Right now I don't think you get anything from putting roots in the crafting table, but I think it could be useful to get uh, sticks or something else similar because obviously you're not going to get real wood from them. You can see this mangrove wood now, it looks super nice, it's a really nice red color, definitely a very interesting wood type for the game, and I actually really like it. It of course comes with all the different variants, you have your slabs, your doors, your trapdoors, stairs, all of that, and it's all in that very nice red color, and the boat I even rode up in was a mangrove boat. Now something that I was just experimenting with right here is actually creating a starter house of, out of these roots. I think. Of course, inside of trees are always a super unique base idea, but this would be very cool as well, seeing just kind of roots around your whole house and you can even see out the entire time. Definitely introduces a very fun starter house type for the new update. Now let's start talking about frogs. So frogs are introduced to the game, definitely a very cool mob to have in the game, but they also have some very unique blocks as well, and even unique blocks to each of their different types. So there are three different frogs, one you're going to find in sort of tropical biomes, one you're going to find in very cold biomes, and one you're going to find in desert biomes. 
each of these different frogs is going to be able to produce a different color of frog light after eating a magma cube. It'll only eat the very smallest of magma cubes. It'll also eat slimes as well, but it's only going to drop a slime ball. This does, however, put in place a super unique slime farm function, so you could actually make a slime farm out of frogs, which I think would be a super fun idea. It might not be as efficient as the methods we currently have for slime farming, but I do think it'd be very cool to see uh, these slimes just being eaten by the frogs. But now we can see the frogs are actually dropping frog lights as they eat all of these magma cubes. I think this is a super cool feature. Definitely going to be fun to see all the different tech community members making different farms to make all of these different frog lights. This is also a super interesting way to get blocks into the game. This is something we really don't have currently. We don't have any mob that eats another mob to produce different types of blocks like this. So it's definitely super cool to see in this new update. These are also the frog spawn options. Frogs will uh, spawn in these forms right here, turn into tadpoles in the water, and then turn into frogs. Something I don't believe we have seen in these snapshots yet, but is supposed to be coming to the game, is the addition of fireflies. Fireflies are supposed to be coming in the new update, which should add a super unique form of life to these mangrove swamp biomes. Right here is also all the different mud, mud block variants, so we have these slabs, the packed mud, the packed mud, mud bricks. I think all of these blocks are super cool. Definitely going to be very interesting building with these. And also because I didn't show it off while we were in the ancient city, here is the recovery compass which is currently pointing to where the warden annihilated me in the deep dark, and right next to it is the echo shard. But that is basically all of the features we currently have in the 1.19 update. Hopefully we are going to get some changes to things like the birch forest and other uh, current biomes that we have in the overworld. Really, I'm not too sure though whether or not we're going to get those. They've already added a lot in this update so far, but I would really like to see some current biome overhaul in the coming snapshots and hopefully the final update. That is all that I have for you guys today though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like on it. And if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well. We of course are covering the new Minecraft updates. We're also doing some concept trailers on the channel which show off what Minecraft could be in future updates. And we also show off mega bases and so much more. So go ahead, check out the rest of our content and I will see you guys next time.